we're going to be talking about confidence intervals of the population mean. when the population standard deviation, sigma, is unknown. So when we're doing confidence intervals of the population mean, we have two cases. One case is when the population standard deviation is known, and the other case is when the population standard deviation is unknown. Now the main difference between these two cases is the probability distribution that you use. When sigma is known, you use the z distribution, and when sigma is unknown, you use the t distribution. Now the t distribution is similar to the z or standard normal distribution, but the difference is that it's actually a family of probability distributions. It's not just a single probability distribution like the z distribution, it's a set of probability distributions. And each probability distribution depends on something called a degrees of freedom. So we have one probability distribution when there's one degree of freedom, another probability distribution when there's two degrees of freedom, and so on. And as the number of degrees of freedom gets large, the t distribution approaches the z distribution. So for example, suppose this is a t distribution with 10 degrees of freedom. And then we have another t distribution. Say this is a t distribution with 20 degrees of freedom. And as we keep going, the t distribution is going to approach the z distribution. Actually, a t distribution with infinite number of degrees of freedom is exactly the same as the z distribution. Now, remember the formula for the case where sigma is known. The formula for the confidence interval is x bar plus or minus z alpha half times sigma over the square root of n. Now when sigma is unknown, we have to change two things from this formula. Uh, we have to change z to t because we're using the t distribution instead of the z distribution. And we also have to change sigma to s because sigma is unknown and we have to use s instead, which is the estimate of sigma. Remember, s is the sample standard deviation, which is the estimate of sigma, the population standard deviation. So our formula in the sigma unknown case is x bar plus or minus t alpha half times s over the square root of n. Uh, now, we're usually going to be given or can easily calculate x bar, s, and n. Um, what we usually need to find is t alpha half. And the first step in finding t alpha half is to set 1 minus alpha equal to the confidence coefficient. Uh, now remember, the confidence coefficient is the decimal form of the confidence level. For example, if the confidence level was 
the confidence coefficient would be 0.95. If the confidence level was 99%, the confidence coefficient would be 0.99. So 1 minus alpha is the confidence coefficient, and T alpha half is the T value providing an area of alpha half in the upper tail of the T distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So um, to get t alpha half, we want to take a look at the t distribution and see what's the t value with an area of alpha half in the upper tail. Uh, now the nice thing about the t distribution table is that it gives you the areas in the upper tail, or in other words, the area to the right, as opposed to the Z distribution or standard normal distribution gives you the areas to the left. So you have to take an additional step in the sigma known case, but we don't have to take that ad uh, additional step in the sigma unknown case. Uh, we can just use the T table directly. We don't have to convert it to the area to the right because it, auto, it already tells us what the area to the right is. Um, now let's discuss a little bit what we mean by uh, degrees of freedom. Um, so the key to degrees of freedom is that the sample standard deviation S, uh, which we use in place of sigma when we're doing the sigma unknown case, the formula is the square root of the sample variance, which is the sum of x minus x bar squared over n minus 1. Now, degrees of freedom refers to the number of independent pieces of information that goes into the calculation of the sample standard deviation. That is, it's the number of independent pieces of information that goes into uh, the calculation of the numerator, which is the sum of x minus x bar squared. Um, now, first of all, there's going to be n pieces of information that go into this calculation, uh, those n pieces of information are x1, the first value minus the mean, x2 minus x bar, the second value minus the mean, up to xn minus x bar, uh, the nth or last value minus the mean. However, We know that the sum of x minus x bar is always going to be equal to 0. So actually, there's not n pieces of information that go into this um, calculation. There's actually n minus 1 independent pieces of information. So there are 
and minus 1 independent pieces of information. And the reason there are n minus 1 independent pieces of information is that because if we have all but one of the x values, then we automatically know that last value because we know that the sum of x minus x bar is going to be equal to 0. Um, so if you have n minus 1 of the x values, then we automatically know that last x value. So there's only actually n minus 1 independent pieces of information. That last piece of information, that last x, is dependent. Okay, so we actually know that there are uh, n minus 1 independent pieces of information. That's why we see that there are n minus 1 degrees of freedom. That's how we get n minus 1 degrees of freedom, because there are n minus 1 independent pieces of information that go into calculating the sample standard deviation. So let's take a look at an example of calculating a confidence interval for the population mean when sigma is unknown. So suppose that our sample size is 54, our sample mean is 22.5, and our sample standard deviation is 4.4. And we want to compute a 99% confidence interval. So let's take a look at our formula again. It's x bar plus or minus t alpha half times s over square root of n, where 1 minus alpha is the confidence coefficient. So let's start by um, setting 1 minus alpha equal to the confidence coefficient. So our confidence level is 99%. So our confidence coefficient is going to be 0.99. And from here, we get alpha is equal to 0.01, and alpha half is equal to 0.005. Um, now, the reason we found alpha half here is because you see in our formula, um, we want to use t alpha half. So we first need to find alpha half before we can get t alpha half. Um, so we found alpha half. Now t alpha half is the t value providing an area of alpha half, 0 0.005, in the upper tail of the t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So our t alpha half, so this is our uh, t distribution, looks like the z distribution. Um, but remember, it has a degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1, n is equal to 54, so 54 minus 1 is 53. So our degrees of freedom for the t-distribution is 53, and our t alpha half is going to be the t-value providing an area of alpha half which is 0 0.005 in the upper tail. So let's go to our t table and look for the t value that has an upper tail area of 0 0.005 when the degrees of freedom are 53. Um, so this is the first page of our t distribution. It goes from a degrees of freedom of 1 to 34. Now we're looking for 53, so let's go to the second page. Okay, so here we have 53 degrees of freedom, and we match it up with an uh, area in the upper tail of 0 0.005. Um, and matching these two up, we get that the t value is 
2.672. This is our T alpha half, 2.672. So using our formula, which remember is x bar plus or minus t alpha half times s over the square root of n. So we have x bar is 22.5. Uh, t alpha half is 2.672. S is 4.4. And n is 54. Uh, now putting this into our calculator, we get 22.5 plus and minus 2.6. Uh, now remember, the right side of our confidence interval is called the margin of Error. So 2.6 is our margin error. The margin of error is the value that you add and subtract from the mean to create the confidence interval. Uh, and then again, using our calculator, we get 20.9 to 24.1. So this is our 99% confidence interval. Um, now, to interpret this result, um, so since this is our 99% confidence interval, um, what it tells us is that we're 99% confident that the population mean mu is between the two values. 20.9 and 